Hey guys and welcome back to another Unregined 4 tutorial and in today's video we're going to be continuing on with our series of creating a main menu and an options menu. Today what we're doing is saving and loading our options menu which we have set up in a previous video. Now I'm just going to go right ahead and start with this and if you haven't already seen the previous videos I definitely recommend going and watching those now as that's where we actually set up the menu and actually changing the options settings and graphic settings and all that stuff as well. So again without further ado let me get right into this one and we're going to start off by opening up our options menu which we created last time. So for me that's options menu here, this is what we've got and we're going to go over to the event graph here. Again this is what we set up previously to actually change all of the graphic settings as you can see here. So now the first thing I want to do is I want to actually save our settings. So to do that we can go back to our designer and we want to create a new button. So we press this button to save. So what I'm going to do is duplicate my back button as it's basically going to be the same thing. So select it, hit Control C, select the canvas panel, hit Control V. Now I'm going to move this back button all the way to the bottom right. So we get it to the same level and then I'm going to move it to the bottom right as that's just where I want to have it. So it's next to the optimal settings over here. And here we are, this is roughly where I want it to be. I'm also going to change my anchor to be in the bottom right like so. And you can obviously move it about to make it look a bit better for you, but this is how I want it. Then I'm going to rename it from back button to save button and also change the text on there to be save as well so the player knows what it does. So here we go, save like that. And we'll compile and save that. Now select the save button again, scroll down to the bottom right and get the on clicked event. So this is where we can now actually do the saving code. I'm going to move it up here just so it's up near the top as well. I'm going to move it all the way up here actually. And so now the saving code is very simple. What we're going to do is simply come out of this and get game user settings and out of the return value save settings. Nice and simple like that. That is all we need to do. This is again why I love using the game user settings is because all of it is already just done and set up for us. Now what I will mention is if you do have your own different options which aren't in the game user settings then you will want to create a save game and set up saving that way which I do have other videos going over as well if that's what you wanted. But what we've done is just use the game user settings so this is all we need to do. What I'm also going to do is right click add a custom event naming this save settings connecting that into the game user settings there and we'll compile and save that. Now I'm probably not going to actually be using that during this video or in this series but I always like to do it anyway, just in case I do want to save these settings externally. I.e. the player doesn't click on the button, but I want to make sure it's saved anyway. This is why I always add a custom event so we can call this as well. That's just why I'm doing that. I'm going to select this all, press C to comment it, naming this save settings. And the low settings is just as simple as this. So what we're going to do is we don't want the player to press the button to load the settings. We just want to load the settings when they start the game. So we're going to be doing this just via a custom event. So I'm going to go over to the right to get some space, right click, add a custom event, naming this load settings like so. Then out of this, once again, we're going to get game user settings and the return value will simply be apply settings because we don't want to load, we just want to apply them. So when we save it, we're saving it to the game user settings. So when we get it, this here is technically loading the settings and we want to then get those settings and just apply them. And as we did before, we want to untick check for command line overrides. So this here is going to be loading and applying the settings. However, what we also mentioned in the previous videos was that what we've done is when we press a button, it's going to actually select it so the player knows which one is selected. I also want to load this so when the player opens the options again for another time, it's going to have loaded their selected options so they know which ones are currently active. And this is also just as simple, just a bit more lengthy and a bit more repetitive as was the other videos. So what we want to do first is if we go to the designer, what we'll see is we're going to do the display resolution first. So what we need to do is make sure we have in at this drop down box here which one the player's got selected. So that's quite simple. What we're going to do is drag out the return value of the get game user settings and get the screen resolution. We're going to come out the return value of that and break int point so we now have it in the x and y values then we're going to get a two text integer for both of these so both of the x and the y leaving it just as normal and default like so 
then this is going to go into a format text. So right click and get format text. In the format, we're going to write open brackets, X, close brackets, X, open brackets, Y, close brackets, and the brackets are the ones with a little indent on them. I'll have them on screen so you can actually see which ones I mean. And then the X to text goes into X and the Y goes into Y. So this is going to write our X value, X, and then our Y value. So i.e. 1920x1080. Then we want to just simply put this into our drop down box. So on the left, if we find our combo box string, drag that in, get it. Out of this, we're going to set selected option. Make sure selected option, not selected index. Connect that into the apply settings so it fires off after it. And then the option is simply going to be the result of our format text. So drag that into there and it should automatically convert it into a string. So now that's going to get the screen resolution and type it on screen so the player can actually read it, as you can see here. And we'll compile and save that. Now we're going to move on to selecting the buttons. So what we're going to do is hold down S, left click to get a sequence after this, so we can fire off a lot of code all one after another. Instead of doing it in one big line, we can have it going up and down, just to keep it nice and neat and organized. So we're going to drag off of then zero and go all the way up here because we're going to need a lot of space for this. And we're going to get game user settings. It's just easier to have it up here rather than all the way down here and dragging over. You can obviously promote it to a variable if you want to, but this is going to be just as simple for us. We're going to be starting off with the frame rate limit, as this is going to be the most lengthy one to do. So out of the return value, we're going to get frame rate limit, as you can see there, and we're going to truncate this value so it turns it into an integer, like so. So truncate, if I spell it correctly, that would help. Truncate. So it goes from a float to an integer because we don't need it to be 30.000. We just need it to be 30 or 60 or whatever it is which you set it to. So we're going to move that down like so. Then we just want to see what the value actually is based upon different values we have inputted. So out of the return value, I'm going to drag and get an equal equal integer. The lowest the player can set it to for me is going to be 30. So again, if we go to the designer, we can see we have 30, 60, 120, and unlimited. Unlimited obviously being zero that it's setting it to. So firstly, I've got 30 here. We want to see if it is being set to 30. So we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, with that being the condition, connecting into the game user settings, and true means the player has selected 30 FPS as their frame rate limit. So we want to get our function of select FPS button, connecting that into true, and setting this to be 30 FPS, because again, this is how we're actually selecting our buttons. If it's not 30, we want to see if it's the next one along, which for me is 60. So hold down B, left click to get a branch, connecting that into false of the first branch. So the condition for this is going to be another equal equal integer, so we can just duplicate that there, connecting it into the truncate again, this time being a value of 60. I'm going to just straighten that to keep it organized. And I'll move up just to maximize space. Then again, select FPS button function, this one being 60 instead of 30. Then we'll do this again. So I'm going to copy all of these, so the equal equal branch and function, control C, control V, connecting it into false there, this one into truncate, and the value this time being 120. Then obviously 120 there, copy and paste one final time, into false, into the truncate, and this one is going to be equal to zero, because for me the last one is unlimited, which is obviously zero. So I hope that makes sense as to why we've just done what we've done. We're seeing what the current FPS value is for the player and then just selecting the button based upon that. I'm going to again move these closer together just to maximize space and then I'm going to move these up like so. Now the next ones we do are going to be a lot more simple than this. The only reason we have to do this is because the frame rate limit is a bit more tricky as there's lots of different values whereas the other ones it's going to be a value of 0, 1, 2 or 3 so we can actually do a switch on int to keep that looking nice and organized later on. So we'll compile, save that's now the FPS done. And as again, we've done this on the load, so every time we load the settings, it's also going to load the buttons. So let's now move on to the next options, which for me is going to be the view distance. So we'll come out of then one and get game user settings, moving that up here. I'm just gonna do it in rough places and then move it later on once I finished it all. Out of the return value, we're going to get view distance quality. Return value of that will be a switch on int. So it's going to fire off a different execution pin based upon an integer which we input. 
So again, for me, it's going to be either 0, 1, 2, or 3. So again, if we go to the designer, near is 0, medium is 1, far is 2, epic is 3. You'll know all this if you've watched the previous video. So we have four different values. So we're going to add four pins. We've got 0, 1, 2, and 3. And if we want, we can also right click and remove execution pin for the default because we're not going to need it. So then, as you may have guessed, obviously, depending on what the value is, we're going to change our function to select a different button. So if we select view distance button, connecting that into zero, that's going to be near. Connecting it into one is going to be medium. Connecting it into two is going to be far. And connecting it into three is going to be epic. Very simple. And again, that's all we need to do for that one. I told you it would be a lot easier than doing the FPS. It's that one was just a tricky one that we had to do. So I'm going to move this down a tiny bit like so. And really all of them now are just the same process that we have here. So what I'm going to do is select all of this, control C, control V to put it down here, and then connect this into another execution pin of then two, dragging that into there. And then all we need to do is just change it from get view distance to instead get post processing quality, I believe is the next one. Delete that, input that into there. And then all we need to do now is actually just change over these functions as well. But obviously everything else stays the same, it's just the functions. So we'll delete these functions and we don't need to copy them next time, do we? Uh, although it was good to keep it aligned. So what we're gonna do is select the post processing button, being low, connecting it to zero, then just duplicate this again and, and then just change it to what it needs to be, i.e. medium, then high, then epic. So as it has been with the other videos, this is going to be a repetitive process, but I'm going to be showing you all anyway, just so you know what you're doing and so you don't get lost in anything. But again, this is really the bad thing about options menus is they are very repetitive. And I might just give that a bit more space in between them. Copy and paste down here. And the reason I'm doing the functions as well is just so I can get the spacing all set up here, like so. Then this one is going to go into another execution pin on the sequence. Changing it from get post processing to you can see up here, get anti aliasing quality. Connecting it into there like so and changing over the functions once again, one final time. Zero is low, copy and paste. One is medium, copy and paste. Two is high, copy and paste. And three is epic. Simple as that. Then we'll copy and paste all of this once again, moving it down here into another execution pin on the sequence. This time it's not post-processing, anti-aliasing, sorry, it is now the texture quality. So we'll put that into the section there, changing over these functions. So we'll delete these, move it down, low, medium, high, and epic, as we have here for the text quality. So again, what this is doing inside of our function is just disabling and, and enabling different buttons so the player knows visually which one is actually selected for their current options menu, for their current option. And we'll duplicate this one final time for the shadow quality now. So one more execution pin, connecting into there, changing text quality to shadow quality. And then we do have another one to do after this, however it is going to be different, which again I'll obviously show you. The text quality is now shadow quality, but again everything else is the same, it's going to be low, medium, high and epic, with being 0, 1, 2 and 3. So I've now got that done there. So now there is one final thing left to do, and that is the window mode. Now this is going to be slightly different, there's only two buttons and two options which we have, however we're doing it slightly differently and also very efficiently. So we'll add another execution pin on here, drag all the way down out of it down here, and again get game user settings like so, and it will go down here, and out of the return value we're going to get full screen mode, that's what it's actually called, not window mode, but full screen mode. And you'll notice the return value of this isn't a float or an integer, it is actually an enum, so it's an enumerator. So we drag out of this, and we can still get a switch, this time being a switch on E window mode, connecting that into there. And with this, you'll notice again, we have full screen, windowed, full screen, and windowed. All we used is full screen and windowed. So very simply, same thing again, select window mode function, 
this one being full screen and this one being windowed. Nice and simply done like so. We'll compile and save that. And this is now the loading and saving of our options completely done and set up. I'm just going to move this a bit here just to keep it a bit more organized and then select all hit C to comment it naming this load options. So again this looks like it's quite a lot but this here really is all we need for loading the options. Everything else is just visually allowing the player to see which option they have selected so it's selecting the buttons. So we'll compile and save that. And one final thing what we can also do is when we set the optional settings, the optimal settings sorry, down here instead of pressing apply hardware benchmark what we can do is simply save settings so let me call the function instead call function save settings and then call function apply settings or not apply sorry load settings and what this will do is it will now also visually display which options have been set by using these here so before the player couldn't see what the optimal settings were now they actually can so we'll compile and save that now we actually need to call this load settings button so what we're going to do is close this all we need to do is open up our main menu widget go to the graph and we're going to change how we open the options menu slightly so what we're going to do is get event construct up at the top here and out of this we're going to create widget with the class being our options menu and out of the retality of this we are going to promote it to a variable naming this options menu and out of this we are going to then not add viewport but instead load settings so call the function which we just created so when we open the main menu i.e. open the game it's also going to load the settings now if we go back down to our options menu here instead of creating the widget once again all we want to do is just get the options menu variable we've created and add that to the viewport instead. So we don't need to continue to create it, we're just adding it there. And we'll compile and save that. We're going to close this and now we're going to test it out. So if I open up my main menu level, we can hit play to see if this works. So it should have then loaded my settings which I saved previously. Give it a second to load, there we go. So you'll notice we're now full screen as that's what I had it to previously. If we go to the options, back, options, back, you'll notice that still works even though we changed how we're putting on screen. And if we go to the options, you can see these are the settings which I've got selected. Now the resolution is 1280 by 720, but I've set it to full screen. So let's also change this to 1920 by 1080 as well. But let's put it to 30 FPS and everything on the lowest possible settings. Save that, back. Let's start the game just to make sure it has done that. It has, this looks terrible. Uh, so let's OF for that and then restart just to see if that did actually save and load our settings. So if we go back in, it's now full screen 1920 by 1080 as that's what we set it to be. It's loaded that, go to the options, 30 FPS, everything was on the lowest settings. And if we press start, you'll notice this looks the exact same. So this now works perfectly for us. What we've done is we set up an options menu in which we can save and load the settings once we have changed it. And that is also based on actually changing the values themselves and also the selection button as you can see here so the player can also see what they have changed. So I'm going to save that once again. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you did find it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.